Welcome, everybody, to Gilman Football on Greyhound Radio. I'm Julian Barron alongside Matt Tomaselli. Gilman's offense this season has been spearheaded by the fireworks and explosiveness of star junior quarterback Kasim Hill, who's led the team to a 23rd overall national ranking and a legitimate chance at an MIAA title. Today, Hill leads his Greyhounds onto the field here at Loyola Blakefield, where the Dons are hungry for an upset special against an intimidating Gilman front. What do you think about this matchup, Matt? Well, Julian, this is going to be a heated one. There has been some less than friendly social media exchanges uh, between the Dons and the Hounds this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. And it is certainly spicing things up. The Hounds, while ranked maybe far ahead of the, of the Dons, are not taking this matchup lightly at all. And I'm interested to see how things are going to heat up. Absolutely. And we hope to bring you a good 60 minutes of football here on Greyhound Radio. As we'll be back for kickoff and Gilman's offense in just a few moments. And welcome back, everybody, to Greyhound Radio. We are preparing for kickoff here at Loyola Blakefield as uh, you can see Gilman Greyhounds marching to their sideline. Practice has just ended, the pregame warm-ups. You know, Julian, some may say the weather here is uh, particularly ugly, but this is perfect football weather. We got light overcast, not too sunny, not too hot, nice and cool, not much of a breeze, but cool air and a generally gray day, but that's going to keep the players cool, even though they'll be getting heated on the field, I'm sure. Yes, this is uh, certainly doable weather for some Friday afternoon high school football. Certainly excited to see our uh, number 23 Gilman Greyhounds take on this team today. The Dons, as of right now, ranked 870th in the country. What does that tell you about this matchup today, Matt? You know, obviously there's, um, you know, a little bit of a, it's off balance in terms of the rankings, but I'm sure we will, um, sure, as the captains head out to center field uh, to the 50-yard line, I'm sure we're going to see some heated play today as both teams um, are opening their conferences in the MIA, conference play in the MIA, and have a lot invested in this matchup um, considering the trash talk that's been going on. As we watch the captains make their way to center field. And they shake hands. Uh, Captain in the Gilman team, it's number 78, Steven Spinella, senior lineman committed to University of Virginia. He is 6'5", 320 pounds, and an absolute beast. He's also a beast in the classroom. Mm -hmm. quite Absolutely. A, quite a, quite a GPA. Of course, our Gilman Greyhounds strive for both success on the field and success academically. Also, you got number 42, Ellison Jordan, leader of that defense, defensive tackle. Uh, has 22 sacks over the last two years, um, a Penn State commit. Um, to his right, you have number 22, John Fitzgerald, a recent big red Cornell commit. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Also holding a 3-5 GPA, um, which was big influence in his decision to play in the Ivy League uh, next year as he is a senior as well. And to their left, you can see Dorian Maddox and Antonio Dupree. As Gelman wins the toss. Let's see what their choice is. They're going to choose the... They have deferred to the second half their choice, um, but I have elected the side of the field towards the building, if you know the McDonough, or the Loyola field, excuse me. Um, and they're going to come back to the sideline and start to get pumped up here. So Loyola will start the game on offense as we prepare for the national anthem here as we get ready for some football at Loyola Blakefield.
And here we go. After the national anthem, we are ready for some Gilman football on this beautiful Friday afternoon at Loyola. Yes, we are, Julian. That indeed, the Gilman team is going to huddle up now. Now, once again, Gilman has elected to defer to the second half, so the Greyhounds with their pregame ritual on the field right now. Looks but like they Gloria will kick Maddox the ball getting off. The, getting the boys going in there. Mm hmm absolutely. And Antonio Dupree as well. The momentum is here as Gilman looks to start their MIAA season right with a win at Loyola. Mm -hmm. You can see the team. And we have preparing quite a for the start of play. Student section today. Yes, absolutely. The they Loyola student section up. is quite pumped up for this game as the uh, the tensions have been flaring, should I say, on social media as for we discussed sure. earlier prior to this game. Mm -hmm. The you know, I was talking to Kasim Hill today, and he was quite fired up for the game. Although the Greyhounds uh, are expected to win this game by a far margin, I don't think they're taking the matchup lightly at all, as they shouldn't be. Opening conference play, this is a huge season. The Hounds are looking to carry their momentum from a really incredible start to their season in non-conference play um, with wins against St. Edwards, or a, a, a one-point loss against St. Edwards of Ohio, but since then a three-game win streak after an overtime thriller against Good Counsel and wallopings of Eastern Christian Academy and Paramus Catholic of New Jersey. And let's hope Gilman can, say, can bring that same flair and determination as we get set to kick the ball off here at Loyola. Alex Cohill back for the kick for the Hounds. Loyola Dons are set up to return. And the ball is going to go. It's going to be fielded by Loyola, just by short of the goal line. Flag is out as he stumbles towards the 20 yard line. Kenny Lewis on the return. That's Kenny Lewis, as Kenny described by the Loyola PA announcer. Now let's check the flag. Return as he gets tackled just past the 20 yard line, and there's a flag on the field. Looks like the, a block in the back from the Dons. This is going to back them up fair amount. Break for Gilman as we start this game. And now the Gilman defense is going to come on, led by number 42, Ellison Jordan, the Penn State commit, as I mentioned earlier. And what an athlete he is. It'll be very exciting to see him on the field today. Oh, for sure. He's another fiery competitor. Uh, you don't want to be on Ellison's bad side, I'll tell you that. That is for sure. Also out there, junior number 34, Eric Smith. The Gilman defense having a little bit of confusion here pre-snap. And Loyal offense in motion, but as they and snap the ball, a there's a flag out. On the play. Looks like a false start from the Dons. A five-yard penalty, and certainly not the way they want to start against this powerhouse Gilman team. Right, Julian? That's correct. You don't want to be going up against the number 23 team in the country and not be playing your best game, so... Let's see if Loyola can fix things up here as they prepare to redo the first snap of this game. Of course, we all know about the revolving door quarterback for Loyola. Looks like they'll run the same play that they tried earlier. It's a handoff up the middle, and that'll gain... The Hounds are going to have some trouble wrapping him up. That yeah, a few yards are gained on the play. That is Biafra Akuranquo, their star running back. Yes, yeah, number 33. It's 5'10", 170. Yeah, Still having a little bit of a, trouble figuring out who the quarterback is for Loyola. Yeah, so uh, the, start, the starter going into the season, Jason Smith for the Dons, got uh, hurt with a shoulder injury and has since been out for a month as the Hounds are going to um, wrap up the Dons short for a loss here. For um, Like I said, uh, the starting quarterback for the Dons has since gotten hurt and is out for, out for um, a month. So taking over, um, they've had a quarterback struggle, actually. Um, it looks like number eight, Jason Smith, is in the game as quarterback. Okay. Jason Smith playing very well for the Dons, as well as Will Kors, who's a sophomore quarterback, who's really been a surprise. And now here's that. Smith rolling out. He's going to step up and run. He's got Green ahead of him, and he dives forward. And let's see where they spot this ball. Looks like he may have the first, and he does have the first. So the Dons are going to convert a third and 15, it looks oh, like. Oh, he may be maybe just short. Check that. Gain of eight. It's fourth down now. Looks the like Dons it'll be. The punt team is on. Fourth down and short. That is number 42, Gavin Rowley. So Gilman makes a stand on defense to start this game, and 
Kasim Hill and the Gilman offense will look to take this ball down the field as Loyola's giving the ball up on their first possession. The snap is high, but he gets it off. And that's a pretty nice punt. And it's punted just across oh. the 50-yard line, but the ball's fumbled by Gilman, and it looks like Loyola's recovered, and the Don's referee has signaled, that. has confirmed that Loyola has recovered the ball. Number 14, what a terrible. Wade Ausler did not fair catch and rather tried to catch it and run with it, but got blindsided by the Dons and seems to have fumbled the ball, and it looks like it's going now, to be Loyola, but Loyola ball. And now I'll tell you, Matt, in that situation, that would be somewhere where I, I would expect the returner to call a fair catch. Oh, for sure. I, I'm not sure he saw uh, the Loyola player uh, coming up the side, and uh, Wade just Wade Ausler, the soft, or the junior, um, just got hit from the side. So here comes Loyola's offense once again. And he's really not happy on the sideline over there as the coaches are going to kind of try to talk to him about what happened. So the Gilman defense comes back on as the Dons are on the Gilman 45 yard and line. And Jason Smith drops Jason back to Smith pass. He dumps it off to his. It's going to be called a completed pass. It's okay. Is that how it works? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Wade. Second down now. Looks like some movement on the Gilman line. And there's a flag out. Could be encroachment. We'll see which way this one goes. And, and that looks like the senior, number 42, Ellison Jordan. That's unacceptable for a Penn State commit senior to be doing. Uh, and that'll move the ball up to the 40 yard line. So some ugly mistakes to start this game for the Gilman special teams and defensive unit as. Number eight, Jason Smith is under center for Loyola. He floats this ball out to the near sideline. It's caught by number 10. But wrapped up by number six, Corey Stevens for the Hounds. So as Matt said, Corey Stevens makes the stop. Third down coming up. It'll be third down and five, just across the 40 yard line. Trying to get to about the 35 is the Loyola offense. Jason Smith lined up at the shotgun, and he flips it out to 10 once again, and he stumbles forward, but looks like he'll be short as the markers switch to fourth down. So it'll be interesting to see here. Will they go for it in Gilman's territory with fourth and short? It'll be fourth. Let's see if they give him the first. I'm not sure. They're checking the spot here. They're checking the spot. The scoreboard now reads first and 10. But the referee is going to signal otherwise for a fourth down. You can see Bit Poji signaling to the referees. It's going to be fourth down. Fourth down and one. Loyola's going to go for it. Boy, if Gilman could get a stop here, it would really reverse all the negative things that have gone on in the field so far this game. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Jason Smith, number eight, is under center. It's an offset eye. He stumbles oh, forward, but he's stopped. Pushed back by Gilman. And Gilman has made the stop on fourth and one to get the ball back near midfield. And that was just a classic, classic example of getting out pushed on the line. The Gilman line outdid the Loyola Dons on that play. And John Fitzgerald was able to get in the backfield and disrupt the play. What a great play by this Gilman defensive front to put the ball in the hands of number 11, Kasim Hill. And we'll see this Gilman offense now for the first time today. Hill. Lined up with the shotgun with a back behind him. And Antonio Dupree runs forward and gains about four. Mark that seven, my bad. And you know, Julian, Antonio Dupree is an absolute beast. 473. 37, excuse me. The ball once again goes to Dupree, and he stumbles across the 50-yard line. That'll be a Gilman first down. Moving the chains here is this Gilman offense to start this game off. This Gilman offense is split by, the time at running back is split by two seniors, Antonio Dupree and Dorian Maddox. Um, so here's Hill from the shotgun. He hands it off. Dupree trying to cut it outside in the near sideline, but he's going to be almost forced down, but then he's pushed backward by Loyola defenders. It'll be a loss of yards. He did have quite a nice stiff arm, though, on uh, number 11, Darian Seward, on that play. 
Second down. So here's Hill, motioning his receiver out. From the Takes the snap, he's running, under pressure. He's still running in the backfield. He's gonna be taken down at the 40 yard line. Boy, is this Loyola defense shown up so far. Oh yeah, that's a loss of 10, a sack for a loss of 10. Kasim Hill, instead of getting rid of that ball, held onto it, and now it'll be a third and long situation for the Greyhounds. Now here's Kasim Hill. Third and 12. Third and 12 for this Gilman offense, as Seven Matt said. And 48 seconds left in the first quarter. Hill takes a snap. He looks, he steps up, and he throws to the sideline, and it's caught. That's number 22, John Fitzgerald, but it's going to be short, and Gilman will be in Loyola's territory. So the question is, do you take the risk and go for it? And what looks like it'll be a gain of about, let's see what they picked up. Let's see where they mark him here. It'll be fourth down and... Yeah, although that was a 15-yard gain, it's not going to quite do it. Yeah, so they'll be punting in fourth and seven. The punt team on for the Greyhounds. Cohill on for the punt. With number one, Dorian Maddox. Blocking for his punter. Almost gets hit, and he may get a piece of that ball as the punt goes down around the 15-yard line. It looked like some pressure from the Loyola special teams unit may have caused that punt to be hurried. Yeah, I think the Don's got a piece of that, and it kind of, uh, luckily it took a Gilman bounce down to about the 15, I believe. So some interesting antics have been going on so far in this game on both sides of the ball. Some stagnant offensive play and some odd situations lead us to pretty much where we began. Loyola taking the ball from about the 15, their own 15. And let's see if they can do anything against this Gilman defense as we... And the, the Hounds really have looked lackadaisical today. They have not looked like the team that they, um, in their out-of-conference play, who earned them that 23rd in the country ranking. They're going to have to start to wake up if they're going to hold to that. Absolutely. And here's the end around by Loyola, but that gets shut down by this Gilman front. Patrick Pratt on the carry. Second down and 11 coming up for the Loyola offense, led by quarterback Jason Smith. He is a junior, 5'11". He'll certainly get an opportunity to show his athleticism here today against the 23rd ranked team in the country. And a flag comes out as this may be a false start on Loyola. And it is. The Dons will be backed up five yards. And, you know, I mentioned the mistakes and the, the poor play of Gilman before, but, you know, Loyola hasn't looked incredibly impressive either. They've had some early penalties too, and this has really not, not been good football from either side thus far. Absolutely. There have been certainly some odd occurrences on both sides of the ball so far in this game. As we near the six-minute mark here in the first quarter, quarterback Jason Smith for Loyola lined up in the shotgun. He steps back, but he's going to take off, and he's going to get stuffed. This Gilman defensive front has not given up. It'll be third and long for the Dons. And on the sack there, that was number 34, Eric Smith, the junior. Yes. Hopefully we have an opportunity to see some more of Eric Smith's athleticism as we continue in this game today. Clock running, 540 left in the first quarter. Jason Smith and the Loyola Dons looking to pick up a third and 18. You know that another guy to mention is the sophomore, number 56, Teron Vincent on the nose tackle and defensive tackle for the Hounds on the D-line. An absolute beast. No doubt about that. As Jason Smith steps back to pass, he lobs this one down the far sideline, but it's incomplete. Not only did he overthrow his receiver, but his receiver also fell down in an attempt to make a lunging dive. And it'll be fourth down for the Don. So another quick stop by this Gilman defense will give the Gilman offense a chance to score early in this one. And that was number 21, Carlton Taylor, the, the junior on the coverage. Uh, it almost looked like there was a little bit of a pass interference. The, uh, the Loyola Don sideline was certainly calling for it, but it's hard to tell from our angle whether it was a fall or a push. Absolutely. As number six, Corey Stevens, is back to receive this punt. Looks like Wade Ausler is not getting a second chance here. He's Piper Bond was also back near Corey Stevens, but neither of them will get an opportunity to return this one as it falls out of bounds 
Yeah, the Hounds have uh, been trying the two the two returner set um, on punts this year, and it seems to be generally working. Although they have muffed um, they muffed a major punt in the St. Edwards game by uh, that was Corey Stevens number six. Um, so you know they're trying to figure out the special teams a little bit. Um, it's been rough in the beginning of the year, and hopefully they can get that figured out. Absolutely, Matt. And let's hope they can get that in check today. They had big shoes to fill with Jelani Roberts, uh, the senior last year who went off to Northwestern. No doubt about that. As Hill, motioning his receiver, takes the snap, and he hands it off. And this run will be stuffed by Loyola, maybe a gain of one. But if that, it's nothing. And it'll be second and ten for this Gilman offense. Really hasn't seen much of anything today from the Gilman on the offensive side of the ball as that was... Number two, Antonio Dupree on the run. Kasim Hill, he's going to roll with this one as he fires it over to number three, Brandon Madison, who makes the catch and falls out of bounds. It'll be third down, third and short for Gilman. And Brandon Madison is an absolute athlete. He has come in as a sophomore. Last year came in as a freshman and made an impact on both the varsity football and basketball teams. And let's hope to see more of him today as Hill hands off to Antonio Dupree, who stumbles forward and picks up the first down, moving the chains for this Gilman offense. we got about 4.30 left in this first quarter. And the Hounds are on the Loyola, looks like about the 25, 26. Correct, as Hill hands it off to Jorian Maddox, and Maddox stumbles forward, picks up a big gain, falling short of the goal line. And you know, he just got tripped up. He, was, he saw the end zone, somebody clipped his heel, and he just was, fell over before the end zone. It was very close to being a score right there, but let's see if we can punch this one in the end zone as he hands off to Maddox, who is in. Flag on the play. Now let's check the flag. Hopefully this does not negate the score by Gilman. You can see Coach Rob Ford getting the uh, touchdown signal on the sideline. Seam Hill also giving that same signal on the field. And it looks like this will be standing for a touchdown. As Gilman declines the defensive pen. Oh, well, let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a score as Gilman will be on to try the extra point. Alex yeah. Cohill. Yeah, that was a 12-man on the field penalty for the Dons, uh, but the Hounds are obviously going to decline that and take the score. Absolutely. So Gilman punches the ball into the end zone for their first score of the day, and now let's see if Alex Cohill can make it a seven-point drive. And again, 4-12 remaining in the quarter. Correct. Now here's Cohill. The whistle blows. The kick is up. And the kick sails past the far upright. It is good. So Gilman turns that into a seven-point drive as they jump out to an early 7-0 lead here at Loyola Blakefield. 4-12 to go in the first quarter. Loyal is going to get the ball back with an opportunity to tie this game. What do you think about that, Matt? Well, that is, you know, for the Hounds, it's looking very good right now. Obviously, being the favorite, they want to get up on them early and often. They do not want to mess around with a team like this and earn a loss that they would, you know, would not be expected to have and should not have. So the Hounds should keep the pace on heavy to start so that the Dons don't get up high on themselves and this game turns into more of a game than the Hounds would want it to be. Absolutely. It's encouraging to see Gilman have a drive like they just did where they really could prove their dominance to this Loyola team. Definitely. Especially after some early errors with the punt, the, the punt and fumble. The beginning of this game was quite interesting. A lot of flukes on both sides of the ball. But uh -huh. thankfully, Gilman being able to recover, this can carry the momentum for them throughout the entire game. Yeah, let's see how the Dons team responds. I, um, in talking with the, the Baltimore Sun, Coach... Uh, Coach Brant Hall was uh, talking about the Gilman matchup and the rivalry that it's been. Um, his team only having won six games the past two years, he said, our guys believe they can go out and compete with the likes of Gilman. They b really believe they have a strong and fiery team this year. And Gilman's going to put that to the test this year in their, in their MIA conference opener. And now, now Max Strom is coming out for the kick. This will be interesting to see what happens here. It looks like they'll move the 
spotted a ball up on the kickoff. Not quite sure why that's happening, Julian. Maybe because of the penalty that was taken prior to the score. Must May be. have something to do with that. Regardless. And now, Max Strom, number 60, as a... Uh, is technically designated as the onside specialist, so we'll see if Gilman has anything up their sleeve on this play as Max Strom lines up to take the kick. Let's see what Gilman does here. It's been an odd game so far. Wouldn't rule anything out at this point. As Strom steps up, but there's a whistle out. It looked like it was intended to be an onside kick. It does. But the play was whistled dead. A timeout was taken by Loyola prior to the kick by Strom. So we'll take a break here. Well, we won't, but the Gilman offense will. Yeah. And we'll see how Loyola responds to Gilman's attempt at getting the ball back after just having scored early in this one. Again, 4-12 left in the first quarter. Gilman up 7-0 on a touchdown run by Dorian Maddox. And that was a pretty smart timeout by the Dons. I think they saw the kicking change and were expecting something fishy. Um, so called a timeout right before the kick was away, and they actually got to see that they the Gilman Hounds were planning on doing an onside kick. Absolutely a smart move by the Dons. When you're playing against a team as highly ranked as Gilman, you need to be on your mental game 100%, and I think the... Don's coaching staff is fully aware of that. So okay. they're, they're watching for every movement, every call, everything they can figure out prior to Gilman plays and snaps. It's just how it has to be when you're facing such an, uh, uh, a strong football team. Of course, Loyola players and Loyola students hyped up about this game. You can see the student section here, as Matt said earlier. Vibrant, as you can imagine, as Alex Cohill now comes on to kick. And it's not Strom on this kick. Looks like the Hounds aren't going to try anything. And Coyle's kick is a squib kick. It's going to be fielded by the Dons. And he, the Dons will not make much of a play out of it. As yeah, that, was, that was very interesting. Cohill lined up all the way on the hash to take the kickoff, not to mention being uh, another 20 yards up. And he kind of just chipped it up into the air towards the 15, 20-yard line. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not to as not to kick it out of bounds. I'm not sure. Well, it's an interesting to see a, a squib kick in that situation. It's also interesting that number 88, the Loyola player who fielded the ball on that play, is not on our roster. So interesting. Not exactly sure who fielded that ball, but regardless, it's a first and ten for the Dons. Now Biff Poggi had a conversation with Alex Cohill, so that quick kick may not have been intentional. Um, it looked like he was talking to him a little bit. And now Jason Smith. Back to pass for the Dons. He flips it out to number four. Jack O'Connor stumbles forward for a small game. Excuse me, that was Zende Smith, number four. Multiple number fours on this Loyola roster, according to their Max Preps roster. Forgive me for that error. Yeah, I'm interested to see if the sophomore, Will Kors, is going to get any time at quarterback today after his performance in the landing game. It'll be very interesting to see that. A revolving door quarterback for Loyola wouldn't be a surprise as Gilman may have jumped off sides. It's encroachment on Gilman. This will give the Dons five yards. These are not the sort of mistakes you want to see against a team that's as lowly ranked as Loyola. Of course, yeah. And, the, you know, the Hounds have really looked... While they're, they have the lead right now and put up together a pretty pretty nice offensive drive, they have not looked good on defense and have been jumping all day. And quarterback Jason Smith is going to sky a screen pass, which is actually going to be caught by Coach Stan White on the Gilman sideline, so that was clearly not how things were planning <laughs> to go. Now third down and five. Third down and five. The Dons needing to convert to keep this drive alive. 3-12 left in the quarter, in the first quarter here. The Dons look to the sideline for a signal from their coach. Hounds again up 7 to nothing here. Number eight, Jason Smith, quarterback for the Dons, in the shotgun with the back to his left. He flips this one out to number 10. It's a oh, one-handed wow. catch for the Dons. Number oh, 10, wow. who's not listed on our roster, stumbles forward for a huge gain. Wow. The Dodds take the, take the ball, does the 15 of Gilman, 70 yards what on the way. What a catch that was, Julian. Number, the mysterious number 10 who's not on the roster made a one-handed grab as he just barely got by the Gilman quarterback. There was no safety there to cover the play, and he made 
quite a game downfield now as the Dons are now in Gilman territory. Now, the throw by number eight, Jason Smith, the quarterback for the Dons, seemed to be a little bit errant. But I'll tell you, number 10 made quite an effort to get that ball. He and not only did. was able to catch it but with one hand and pull it in, but he was able to run all the way downfield nearly to the goal line around the 15-yard line of Gilman. So now the Dons of the red zone, they hand this off to number four, Izende Smith. Who doesn't go much of anywhere. Again, that was just another lapse in coverage by the by the Hounds, which is really unacceptable to see. Um, and I know Biff Pogey is, is not happy here on the sideline, but still encouraging his guys in a positive way here. And, you know, the, this Gilman defense has really looked asleep the entire game thus far. They're lucky they haven't had any greater gains to this point. The loyal players on offense looking to their sideline for the call. And now Jason Smith, the quarterback, with number four, Zende Smith, his running back, split out to his right with three receivers to his left. Zende Smith gets the ball, but he's stuffed by Gilman. Wow. That's number tw 25, Shamar Shanks for Gilman, who's in on the play. Yeah, he wrapped him up near, almost as soon as he got the ball in the backfield. A very dominant defensive play for Gilman as Loyola looks to pick up a third and eight. This will be the second third down of this drive for the Dons. This one in the red zone. So Jason Smith, the junior quarterback for the Dons, looking to lead his team to a score here with 1.29 left in the first quarter. Gilman up 7-0. Jason Smith looking to get something done for his team. Smith takes the snap and he steps back. He's got receivers going to the end zone, but he's going to evade a sack. He steps up, but he doesn't get the first down, but he was able to get away from Gilman's pressure. This will be a fourth down for the Dons. And again, that was number 42, the boy dog, Ellison Jordan, who almost had him on the initial sack and then was able to chase him down about, at about the line of scrimmage. Um, and, you know, we have quite a crowd on hand here at Hargeddon Field in, uh, at Loyola, um, Loyola Blakefield. Absolutely. So Loyola on to try the field goal, try and put three on the board here as Gilman leads at 7 nothing with less than a minute to go in the first. The kick is up, and the Almost kick blocked. gets through the uprights. So Loyola makes it a four-point game as we near the end of the first quarter in this one. Gilman up 7-3 to three with 38 seconds left to go in the first. That was a powerful kick by Gavin Rowley, number 42, the kicker for the Dons. Absolutely. It was right on spot, right where it needed to be to keep the momentum for Loyola at least somewhat visible as they look to stop the Greyhounds on defense with this upcoming drive. And, you know, that's all Loyola needed, a big play to get some momentum and to put points on the board. Now they're showing Gilman that they will not be taken lightly and that this is quite going to be quite a game for them. So now Gilman's offense preparing to get back onto the field. You can see the assistant coaches alongside Biff mm -hmm. Pogey. Now Gilman has blown out oil in the past uh, in their past six meetings uh, in the MIAA. They play each other once a year, and Gilman has really, it's been a romping victory for the, for the Hounds uh, in the past few times it's happened. But this year, again, like I said, Coach Branhall really believes in his Dons, and uh, they've, they've given the, Gilman, Gilman a game thus far. So Dorian Maddox and Corey Stevens back to return this kickoff. Kick and the Dons away. kick it off. It's number 42, Edge E. Let's see how to pronounce EJ Justice is the Loyola Dons kicker. And this ball looks like it went into the end zone for a touchback. So Gilman will get the ball to 20. Looking to make something happen with 38 seconds left in the first quarter. It's myself alongside Matt Tomaselli. I'm Julian Barron. Here for Greyhound Radio at Loyola Blake Field here today on a, a, a gloomy afternoon. But also a good one for football as we look to... Have a good start to the season for the number 23 overall ranked Gilman Greyhounds in their MIAA season. You know, they have a long road ahead of them, and this has got to be a win if they want to be a powerhouse in the MIAA this year. So Hill motions his receiver behind him, fakes the end around, keeps, oh no, let's see who has it. It looks like it's Antonio Dupree. Number two, Antonio Dupree laid quite the hit on LaDon's defender. Dupree makes it all the way down to the 45 yard line. That'll be a Gilman first down and more. Kasim Hill congratulating his 
running back as he makes his way back to their side of the ball as Dupree takes the ball once again, plowing forward past the 50 and takes it down to about the 47 of the Dons. So Gilman already on the other side of the field as we near the end of the first quarter in what has been an interesting game so far. And this Gilman offensive line is going to give him quite the push all day. They're just absolute beasts. Now Gilman gets the ball off before the end of the first as Antonio Dupree rumbles forward, gains about one or two, but that'll be the end of the first quarter. Gilman seven, the Dons three. It's myself, Julian Barron, alongside Matt Tomaselli with you here on Greyhound Radio. Happy to cover this game today. As we come back for the second quarter, Gilman will have the ball second down and two to go on the Loyola 46-yard line. We'll be back in just a few moments for the start of the second quarter. Welcome back, everybody. We're starting the second quarter here at Loyola Blakefield. It's second and two to go for the Greyhounds as Hill takes the snap out of the shotgun, rolls out, and fires it to his receiver, John Fitzgerald, who's tackled around the 30-yard line, but that'll be a Gilman first down as they move closer to the Loyola Dons goal line. And that's a nice snag by 22, the big red commit, John Fitzgerald, the senior. Absolutely. The news of John Fitzgerald's Cornell commit coming within the past few weeks. Certainly good news for this Greyhound team as they hand the ball off to Dorian Maddox. And Maddox stays on his feet as he's taken down just across the 20-yard line. Looks like it'll be another first down for the Gilman Greyhounds that they're really showing that they can move the ball on offense against a not highly ranked team. Running the hurry-up of offense. Running the hurry-up offense, excuse me, as a whistle blows before the snap. So Loyola takes a timeout here with 11.37 left in the, in the second quarter. Again, that's probably another good timeout. Gilman was really pushing the pressure uh, to try to, uh, you know, keep the offense moving against this Loyola Dons defense who looked pretty fatigued. So Coach Brandt Hall is going to take a timeout. Like so, so said, yeah, go ahead, Matt. Like I, like I said, this Gilman offensive line is ab absolute mammoth. They average 296 pounds for each of them. Um, senior heavy offensive line and commitment heavy offensive line. We got Devery Hamilton, 290 pounds, of Michigan commit. Another a senior uh, comes in at six foot seven. Steven Spinell is six foot five, 320, perhaps the biggest on this line. The UVA commit, as I said earlier, and he's helped out by West Mel and Stuart Keener, who are 280 uh, each, who are committed to Navy and Georgetown, respectively. Now, I'll tell you, Matt, it's been very impressive to see this exciting Gilman offense on the field so far today. While they had a few flukes early on, Kasim Hill, Antonio Dupree, and Dorian Maddox, the big playmakers on this offense alongside Corey Stevens and John Fitzgerald so far today, it's been fantastic to watch. Certainly. As Hill gives the handoff to Dorian Maddox, he stumbles up the middle for a gain of a few. It'll be second down for Gilman. Gain of two. It'll be second and eight. 11.20 left on the second quarter for Gilman as they run the hurry-up offense. He'll fix the handoff. He's rolling out. He's going to run with it, and he's going to gain a few. Not sure how many he carry. How not sure how many yards he picked up on the carry. Looks like, three. but it will still be. It looks like yeah, three yards. It'll be three. Third down and five. It's going to bring up third down for the Hounds, deep in Loyola territory on the ten. So Kasim Hill, we're going to make something happen here. He fakes the handoff, and he's going to keep it. Kasim Hill stumbles short of the goal line, but it's a Gilman first down. 
Oh, looks wow, like he was like in. He was in. He might have just scored it past the pylon. And that'll be six more points for Gilman as we near the 11 minute mark here in the second quarter. That was a nice dive by Kasim Hill. We're going to have Blake Leonard, number 84, coming out to hold the ball for the kick. Now, my apologies. I couldn't see that Kasim Hill crossed the plane from this angle as Alex Gohill boots the extra point through the uprights and it hits the building, the athletic building for Loyola, which is suited right behind the fields here at Loyola Blakefield. So Gilman with a commanding 14-3 lead here with 11 minutes left in the second quarter. Now it's going to be interesting to see how these Dons respond. If they start to fall, to fall here and to falter um, and lose that momentum that they had coming into this week and really their season um, with how confident they are in their ability, this game will be lost. Let's see how Brant Hall's team responds. It'll be very interesting to see that. With a high-flying offense like Gilman, it's tough for a team like Loyola to make something happen, but let's see if they have the momentum they need to keep this game interesting as Gilman holds on to a 14-3 lead here early in the second. Gilman's kickoff team comes on, spearheaded by number 27, Alex Cohill. Lewis is back to receive. For Loyola, as the Dons prepare to start their next drive, Cohill sets the ball on the tee, sets back, lines it up, and he's ready to kick. <laughs> Whistle blows. And Cohill boosts this one down to Loyola's end zone. It'll be a touchback, as signaled by the referee. So now Kasim Hill, Gilman offense, has done their job. Let's see if the Gilman defense can step up and do their job as the Dons get the ball back again with about 11 minutes left in this second quarter. So the Hounds are going to come back out on defense. Number five, Drew Ehrlich, the safety, commanding, pointing out, calling signals for the, for the Hounds on D. Of course, the well-known son of Governor, former Governor Bob Ehrlich. Yep. as Jason Smith and this Loyola offense comes back in the field and Smith runs. He's still on his feet. He's past the 20 down to the 30 yard line. Smith making plays with his legs and that will be what looks like a second and short for Loyola. It's a gain of nine on the run by the quarterback, Jason Smith. Yeah, and the cowbells here at Loyola have been rattling. They handed out over 200 cowbells before the game today and it you can certainly hear it. Yes, the, the Loyola fan section certainly buzzing with excitement as they take on this number, tw number 23 ranked Gilman squad. You can see John Fitzgerald signaling to his de fellow defensive players about what possibly this Loyola offense could be drawing up here as they look to convert a second and short. The handoff to Azende Smith looks to have enough for the first down. Oh, and it was my bad to Biafra Akaranko, again, one of the stars of this loyal team, as Matt said earlier. Seem they have a platoon situation between him and Azende Smith in the backfield. Yeah, and he's coming off a great game, not their most recent, but the one before that against Archbishop Curley. The Dons had a 33-32 uh, upset, and he had a season-high 150 yards on 11 carries that game and two touchdowns. So now Smith takes the snap from the shotgun. He flips it out to his receiver. That's number 14, Jake Barry. And he's taken down hard by Antonio DeServo, an absolute beast, the junior, number 32. And now correct me again, that was Andreas Price. 14 is one of the numbers that on our roster we have multiple guys wearing that number. So that was, again, Andreas Price it's with the reception. It's been a guess check today, Julian, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the Don's waiting for their call from the from the offensive coordinator. And they're going to line up here. Jason Smith looks about ready to get this ball snapped. Second and seven for the Don's. Looking to move the ball as Jason Smith takes the snap out of the shotgun. And he completes the pass to Andreas Smith. But Looks he, like it'll be just short of the first. He completed it at a price. Got absolutely leveled by the, the boy dog, Ellison Jordan. Someone I would not want to have coming after me. 
third down. And number eight is going to come off for the Hounds. That is, excuse me, that is Shane Lee coming off for the Hounds, a freshman. And again, that was Andreas Price on the reception for Loyola. That's now setting up with a third and one situation with nine minutes to go in the second. The referee signaling a timeout to possibly take a look at the spot of this ball. See if Loyola may have had the first down with that reception by Andreas Price. So, Matt, as we near the halfway mark in this second quarter, what do you think Gilman needs to do to maintain this lead as we head towards halftime? You know, I think the defense really has to clean up some of these errors and, you know, stay strong in order to not let the Dons progress on offense. And that way, don't give them any life in this game if they want to shut them down and shut them down early. So now Jason Smith and the Dons line up in a third and short situation. And he's got his man Akaronquo in the backfield. Fullback split out to his right. And he's under center for one of the first times today. They've been working mostly out of the shotgun. That's true. He steps back to pass, and he's sacked by Gilman. Dropped back to pass from under center, and he was taken down quickly. The pressure was relentless. Oh, yeah. those That Hound's defensive line was all over him. Looks like it was number 42, Ellison Jordan, or at least he looked up, got up, and was celebrating after the sack. Although there were multiple blue helmets on the scene there. So now Loyola's punt team on to kick this one off. And it looks like Corey Stevens is going to be back again along with, looks like Piper Bond back there as well. So number 42, Gavin Rowley will punt this one away for the Dons. This is a decent punt. It's fielded by Corey Stevens. He's breaking to the outside. He's past the 50, and he spins and it's taken down just across the 50-yard line, but gets that return into Don's territory. It'll be first and 10 for Gilman, just past the 50-yard line. A great return by Corey Stevens as that punt hung a little bit for him to take that one across the field. And he was wrapped up by number 89, Dominique Clark for the Dons. If Gilman can maintain this dominant look, they most certainly have a very decent shot as com of coming away with the win here. So now Kasim Hill in the Gilman offense on comes with back onto the field. Number seven, Thomas Booker, the sophomore who's made quite an impact, especially in some of their non-conference game, preseason games. Absolutely. Hill now having a discussion with the referee as uh, his running back, Antonio Dupree, waits in the backfield. Wade Ausler set out wide to the Gil towards the Gilman sideline. Looks like Corey Stevens. In the quarter. Corey Stevens, the other receiver on the far side. And Fitzgerald lined up in the slot. As the Gilman offense continues to look for an explanation from these referees, Biff Foggy having a conversation with the crew chief. Looks like they're going to get things sorted out here. I don't know what caused the confusion. Hopefully play will resume shortly. Again, 7.49 left in the second quarter. Approaching halftime here at Loyola Blakefield. A beautiful afternoon for some football. A little bit cloudy, yeah. but still a great day to play. Same setup. Hill ready to take the snap from the shotgun, and he does. He hands it up the middle to Antonio Dupree, who stays on his feet, stumbles forward, and gets to about the 35-yard line. That'll be a gain of about 12, and that'll be a Gilman first down. Yeah, he got banged around, but was able to gain a good, decent amount of yardage there. So now Hill and the Gilman offense showing their dominance once again with a quick first down strike to start this drive off. And the handoff is on the end around to number four, Brandon Madison, who is taken down by this loyal defensive front. Doesn't look like he didn't, it doesn't look like he got anything Big, maybe a gain of about one or two. You know, the, the Hounds have been much more effective against runs up the middle. I think that's because of the power, brute strength of this offensive line. That absolutely could explain it as Hill takes the snap and he rolls out. He's going to swing this one long. His receiver fell down. That was number four, Brendan Madison, his intended receiver. But he wasn't able to complete that ball as Madison fell down short of the goal line where that ball was headed. And he hung it, a big lofting ball. Looking like he was trying to uh, arc it in there, but unfortunately, Brandon Madison lost his footing. 
So now Hill in the ground. Looking to convert a third and eight situation. They're leading by 11 here with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. And Hill takes a snap and he hands it off to Antonio Dupree. And Dupree stands on his feet. Gets wow. down to the 10 yard line. A fantastic play by, by Antonio Dupree to take this ball into the red zone and keep this Gilman drive alive with about 6.50 left in the second quarter. Somehow he was able to fight his way through there and get a pretty decent game, and Biff Pogey is fired up on the sidelines. Gilman's athleticism certainly on display so far here today as Antonio Dupree takes the ball again. He's tackled in his lower half, and he's going to have a gain of about four or five of the play. My bad, looks like more of a gain of two. Although it doesn't really look like it by the looks of the chains, but I'll go with what the PA announcer says as the ball is handed off once again to Antonio Dupree, but he doesn't get much of anywhere on this play. It'll be third and about six for the Gilman offense. And you know, the junior, Omar Whiting, the strong safety has been all over the field today for the Dons, having a great game on defense. Absolutely. Now it's third down and seven. Kasim Hill huddled up with his offense. Getting ready to snap the ball in the red zone, but it looks like a timeout is called by either of these teams. Timeout. Called by Gilman. So Biff Poggi probably going to want to talk about this play prior to the snap. With third down and three to go. Now, it seemed like that wasn't correct. It seemed like what the PA announcer was saying wasn't correct. But what we initially thought was a shorter yardage situation is now... A third and three. So we were right to begin with. Third and three for the Gilman offense when they return from this timeout. Biff Pogey. His offense in a frenzy near the sideline. Discussing the play that could give them a bigger lead as we head towards halftime. 14 to three is the score with the Dons trailing by 11. Kasim Hill. Leads his team back out onto the field with Antonio Dupree. He's got Corey Stevens split out on the near side. He's got number one, Dorian Maddox, split out as a wide receiver off the far side. John Fitzgerald in the slot. The own line looking confident about what they're doing with Thomas Booker also in the game at what looks like a tight end position. And number two, Dupree is in the backfield. We'll see if they give it to him. And now Maddox in motion. He takes the ball from Hill, but he's taken down short of the first down. And it'll be interesting to see what Gilman does here. Do they feel confident enough to go ahead and try and score here rather than settle for the field goal? Now, I yeah. say take your points, but we'll see what they do here. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with this 14-3 lead and how much they want to push the press the issue. Looks like they're the hurrying it up, and they're going to call the play. Hill is in the backfield, out of the shotgun. He's rolling. He pitches it back to Maddox. Maddox looking for room, and Maddox stumbles forward, and it looks like... He was stopped short, as signaled by the referee. But it was a gain of four, and it's a first down for the Greyhounds, just short of the goal line. The question there wasn't whether or not he got the first down, more of whether or not he stumbled into the end zone as the Loyola defense wasn't able to wrap up on that play. We were getting mixed signals from the referees there for a second, and for a second the Don's uh, student section actually erupted, but it looks like they're going to signal for a first down, rather. So the stop made by Loyola to keep the Greyhounds out of the end zone. But regardless, four more downs for Gilman as they set up to try and put six more on the board. Hill from under center, plows forward, and he's in for the touchdown. So Kasim Hill rushes this one in from about a yard out, and that'll put six more up for the Greyhounds. 20-3 to three is your score, and it'll be 21-3 to three if we can assume that Alice Cohill will make this extra point. Fantastic showing by this Gilman offense so far today. For sure, for sure. Putting up 21 points in the first half as opposed to the Don's three. Cohill on to try the extra point. Whistle's blown before the extra point is kicked. The kick was good, but it looks like the refs have something to say about this play. Play was called dead. And it looks like they're going to call off the flag. I don't know why it was thrown, what they thought they saw, but regardless, looks like the point after is going to be good as the flag will be waved. Oh, all right, so 
Gilman will re-kick as the whistle was blown prior to the snap of the previous play, even though there was no foul. Bit of a miscommunication on the part of the referees here today as Cohill takes the kick through the uprights and it is good, skirting past the near upright. So Gilman with a commanding 21-3 lead here as we near the five-minute mark in the second quarter. Will the Dons be able to do something before halftime? We'll find out as they're about to receive the kickoff from the Gilman offense. Yeah, and the Dons really got to put up points here. They they can't let this game slip away if they want to uh, they want to stay in it and compete with these Hounds. Absolutely, can't have that happen. Now the Dons are coming off of a, a three-game winning streak. They started their season off with two scrimmages, um, St. Mary's and at Fulton High School, and then began their regular season with some out-of-conference play, losing to John Carroll 35 to 18 to open the season. John Carroll perhaps being the biggest surprise in the MIA B conference this year with an amazing quarterback. But since, the Dons have been able to pick up wins against BL, an upset against Archbishop Curley, and Landon School from the IAC. IAC. Um, and they're, they're really on a roll here, as, Ma as they say. Absolutely, Matt. This Dons team is no pushover of a football team. They're on a three-game win streak as opposed to Gilman's four-game win streak. Certainly something to look out for as we move forward in this game. Now, Matt's trying to correct me. I may be wrong about the Gilman win streak, but I'm almost positive that Loyola is on a three-game win streak as of today as Cohill boots this one downfield. Looks like it's going to be short of the goal line, and it's going to be returned by Loyola. Their returner plows forward, but he's going to be taken down. It's number two that gets down to the 20-yard line. Lewis was the returner. He's not on our roster, so Matt and I were a little bit confused on that play, but the PA announcer made sure that we knew that his last name is Lewis. So Lewis takes the ball to the 20-yard line. That's where the Dons will set up shot for this drive. Yeah. You can hear the uh, sideline. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the, the cry from the Gilman sideline that we want the ball back. Some exuberant fans certainly making their case heard. As Loyola and their junior quarterback, Jason Smith, line up to take the snap out of the shotgun with five minutes left in the second quarter. Gilman defense filling the box. Smith with the screen. And that's Azende Smith. And Smith is taken down around the 40-yard line. So Loyola with a big play to start this drive as Azende Smith makes makes the, excuse me, takes the ball down to the 40-yard line. It'll be a first down for Loyola and a big game. That, that screen was set up really well by the Dons. What the offensive line is going to do on a screen is they're going to release the defensive lineman into the backfield to let them at the quarterback. And the quarterback's ideally is going to get the ball off to the receiver so that the defensive line has gotten past the line and cannot catch up to the receiver. And it worked perfectly that time. Number 33, Akaronquo, in the game for Loyola now, alongside his quarterback, Jason Smith, number eight. Number 14, Andres Price on the near side for the Dons as Smith takes off, evades the pressure. He's going to stay on his feet, and he's taken down just short of the 50-yard line. This will be a second and short situation coming up for the Dons. So Dons certainly responding, but looks to be like a, 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 a well-timed response for this offense that's been struggling a little bit here today in, in, in relation to the Gilman offense, which has been moving the, moving the ball down the field yeah, with they, ease. They really have some momentum here going. This Gilman defense looks a little confused and a little tired right now. Absolutely. And excuse my stuttering on the uh, past explanation. Sometimes things get a little bit confusing when your rosters aren't exactly up to date. And I think Matt can agree with me on that one. Oh, for sure. As Smith. Oh, and Smith wow. gets nailed alongside his running back. The handoff was in the process of occurring as Gilman's defensive front completely nailed both the running back, Akaronquo, and the quarterback, Jason Smith, that was Ellison Jordan in on the pressure. A fantastic play to you show know, the dominance of this Gilman front. He's gone by local celebrity. He's gone by boy dog. But Ellison Jordan, wow, what a hit that he laid on that quarterback. <laughs> what a fantastic play by Ellison Jordan. Running back, excuse me. So it's the same setup for Loyola. Andreas Smith out to the near side as receiver. They got a slot receiver in the game with Jason Smith. About to take the snap as Smith... Fires this ball incomplete. 
It was a diving, well, a backwards dive sort of effort for his receiver on the far side, but that was an incompletion. So Loyola looks like another punt coming up for the Dons. Now, excuse me, I keep calling number 14 Andreas Price, Andreas Smith. His name is Andreas Price. Going to need to make sure I know that as we move forward in this game. As number 42, Gavin Rowley, on to kick it for the Nons. Back for the Hounds again, Piper Bond and Corey Stevens to receive the kick. The snap, a good one. The punt is off. And a, a fair punt. catch called by Piper Bond. And it's going to be inside the 20, so a really good punt by this Loyola punter. Yeah. A lot of hang time. The Dons players really surrounded Piper, and uh, uh, luckily Piper Bond was able to see that and make a fair catch on the 15 yard line. Now, regardless of that punt's outcome, Gilman has the ball back. Even if they're inside the 20, they've got a 21-3 lead here as we near halftime. The game is certainly theirs to win as we move closer to the halfway point in this one. So now, it's Kasim. Kasim Hill out of the shotgun with Thomas Booker in motion. And now Hill. It's a broken screen, and he just lost this one out of bounds. It'll be second and ten coming up for the Greyhounds. Yeah, looked like Kasim, Kasim Hill was a little indecisive in the pocket there as uh, it was a design screen, so the, the defensive linemen were able to get into the backfield pretty quickly, and I think he was smart to throw that ball out of bounds. Absolutely. Read well by that Loyola defensive front. And Dylan Bird, number 80, coming on in the, uh, as a wide out here. Certainly do not want to risk making a big mistake and throwing it to a Loyola defender here with a 21-3 lead as... The run by Gilman is stuffed by Loyola. Dylan Bird, a.k.a. the Birdman, uh, coming on there. He's coming off now, but uh, a first-year junior playing, playing this year, and he's, he's made a, a, a decent impact on the, for the Hounds at tight end. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. As Hill has two backs split out to his right with three wide receivers out. And he's got one receiver in motion. They fake the handoff to that receiver as Hill stepping up. He's going to run. He evades Loyola tackles. And then he's taken down just short of the 30. So a first down for Gilmez. Kasim Hill has his athleticism on display here at Loyola Blakefield, picking up a first down to keep this drive alive for Gilmez. absolute great play by number 11, Kasim Hill. Uh, just a way to make something happen. Such a pocket presence from uh, Kasim Hill. has received offers from Michigan State, Syracuse, uh, UVA, and the like. Penn State as well. It's been fantastic for this junior quarterback. One of the best in the MIAA as Corey Stevens gets the flip out from Kasim Hill, who spins out of a tackle, but Corey Stevens isn't able to do anything with that move. And this will be a second and short situation coming up for the Greyhounds. Now, Matt, as I've said, Kasim Hill is incredibly dynamic. He can run, he can pass, he can extend plays. And you would have to think that to, to lock this game in the win column for the Greyhounds, he's going to need to display that as he hands it off to Antonio Dupree for a short game. And, you know, he's had some really great games this season already. He's really been stepping up as a junior and leading this team. Obviously not having played quarterback uh, as the starter anyway uh, last year, considering Kai Loxley, the senior who's off in Texas now, uh, at the University of Texas, uh, being the quarterback last year. Absolutely. Kasim Hill, the centerpiece of this offense. As he drops back to pass, he's going to loft this one deep. John Fitzgerald is open. Oh, it's right through his hands. He was open. He had a step on his defender. Yeah. But Kasim Hill put that ball where it needed to be, but John Fitzgerald just could not pull it in. Yeah, that was an absolute dime from Kasim Hill right through the hands of the Cornell commit. I'm fortunate to see, but the Hounds have second down now. As Dylan Bird, number 80, comes on again. So it'll be a short situation for this Again, yep. notable is uh, Piper Bond in the slot, the, the sophomore. That's correct, and excuse me, it'll be a second down and what looks like to be about nine for Gilman as they flip it out to Thomas Booker, and Booker, speeding what past Loyola defenders, gets it across midfield, and he's down inside wow. the 40 of Loyola. Great play by Thomas Booker. Look at the big man run. Booker, absolute specimen of an athlete. A huge sophomore, but quite quick. He's also uh, on the basketball team as well, and he's really a force in any sport that he's playing. Every single piece of this Gilman offense has come together here today. Let's hope that continues as they look to firm up this win. Well, what hopes to be a win as Kasim Hill drops back to pass and overthrows his intended receiver. Looks like 
Is that Piper Bond? It's Piper Bond. Yes. Just overthrows him. And Piper Bond's going to come off as John Fitzgerald re-enters the game. And, you know, he, Kasim was not, although he's looked great today, that was not one of his best passes as he did not lead Piper, who was coming across the middle, and actually overthrew him as well. Absolutely. As uh, Mr. Christian of Gilman may disagree, but you can't be perfect 100% of the time as Hill hands it off to Antonio Dupree, who stumbles forward, gains a few. Looks like maybe a gain of four or five. Third down coming up for Gilman. As... Uh, they look to convert this third down here today. It's a timeout by Gilman, or is that timeout yeah. by Gilman? Yes, it's a timeout it's by a Gilman with one minute left here to go in the second quarter, trying to keep this drive alive, get some points out of this. I think the Hounds are just going to get their off, give their offense a breather. It looks like the O line is getting a little fatigued, uh, but probably going to draw something up here as Gilman sits on the Don's. About their 35, 34 yard line, looking to press the issue and get another score in before halftime, which would really, really, you know, so make make more solid the, the Hounds' lead. Now it's important to remember that Gilman does receive the ball at halftime, as they won the toss at the beginning of the game, and they elected to defer and receive the ball at the halfway mark in this one. So Gilman looking to pick up a third down and five. The Loyola Dons. Need a stop to keep their hopes alive here before halftime. Hill back to pass. Flips this one out to Corey Stevens. And Stevens is on the move. Pass wow. the 20 and inside the 10. He's going to take this all the way for a Gilman score. What a fantastic move by Corey Stevens for six. And Corey Stevens' Twitter handle is going to prove even more appropriate, that being that six. Because Corey Stevens made an absolute stellar move to get into the end zone and make six points. An unbelievable play by Gilman's dynamic wide receiver, number six, Corey Stevens. And now Alex Cohill on to try the extra point. And you know, this Don's crowd is absolutely silent now. The snap, the kick, and it's good. Right down the middle. They were really coming into this game with such high expectations. And, uh, you know, they really played the Gilman, this Gilman team pretty tough at the beginning of the game. But it looks like it's starting to slip away. That's correct, Matt. As 28-3 is now the score in favor of the Greyhounds. I'd like to pause for just a minute to remind our viewers or our listeners, I should say, that the Loyola Wi-Fi network has had its fair share of uh, disappointments here today. I know that buffering and loading may be a bit of an issue for listeners at home, at work, or wherever you are. So just to remind everybody that we will do our best to fix that issue as we move into halftime and hope that you keep listening here on Greyhound Radio as Gilman developing a strong lead. It's currently 25-point lead here at Loyola Blakefield. Glad to have you with us, myself, Julian Barron, alongside Matt Tomaselli for this one. And you know, there's a few McDonough players poking around here, maybe doing some scouting as the 100th annual Gilman McDonough game is coming up later this year. Absolutely, and that game will be broadcasted live on either Greyhound TV or Greyhound Radio with Mr. Christian alongside Mr. Holly and some Gilman alumni taking reins over the announcing for that one as this Kick is returned by number two, Lewis, for Loyola. And he hurdles a defender, but isn't able to do much of anything with that as he stumbles just short of the 25. It's a nice return from Lewis there for the Dons. So if you're still listening, I'd like you to remember that, again, the internet has been quite an issue today, and we apologize for that on behalf of everybody here at Greyhound TV. But we will look to fix that as we move towards halftime with 50 seconds left in the second quarter. But it's been a, it's been a, fi a fun one, excuse me, so far here today with Gilman jumping out to a 25-point lead. Kiel Kasim Hill and Antonio Dupree and Dorian Maddox have really made their presence dominant on offense while this Gilman defense has not been as Jason Smith... Drops back and is tackled for what looks like not much of a game. But as I was saying, the Gilman offense has been fantastic so far here today. Really putting on a show for these Gilman fans that decided to come out to see their team, their number 23 ranked team of the country, take on the Loyola Blakefield Dons as Jason Smith. It certainly has. Don, the 
the Hounds have ironed out uh, some of the, the early issues that they were experiencing as uh, the Don's running back is going to be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Absolutely. That was number 33, Biafra Akaranquo on the handoff and Again, the rush. Their senior running back who's really made, you know, done a great job for them this year. Um, like I said before, 420 yards on 51 carries this season. And he's a competitor. So the first half is over here at Loyola Blakefield. The score is 28 to three. Gilman has been dominant on offense and defense. They are proving why they are the 23rd best high school football team in the country. Loyola, can they make something happen in the second half? We'll have to stick around and see here on Greyhound Radio as we seek to sort out these internet issues that we're having that is keeping the listeners that we're having here today from enjoying the experience of listening to the game. But we're going to do everything we can to sort that out during halftime. But again, the important thing, 28-3 to Gilman with a whole second half to go for Loyola to try and catch up. It's myself, Julian Barron, alongside Matt Tomaselli signing off for now. We'll be back briefly for the start of the second half. And welcome back, everybody. I'm Julian Barron, alongside Matt Tomaselli, and this is the Greyhound Radio Halftime Show. At halftime, it's 28-3 to Hounds. It's been a spectacular performance so far by Kasim Hill, Antonio Dupree, Dorian Maddox, and the entire Gilman offense. They have been dominant. They've been completely overbearing on this Loyola Dons defense. Now, may I remind you, this Gilman defense has been nothing to ignore itself. It has held the Dons to three points in the first half, and they're looking to continue that trend as we head into the second half. And Matt, I feel that if the solid play comes from both ends of the ball for the next about 30 minutes of football, I think we could see a Gilman win here today. Yeah, I, I think if the Hounds come out play, playing like they were at the end of the first half, there's really going to be no stopping them. Um, the Dons are really going to have to uh, be playing well, and the Hounds are going to have to make some mistakes and let the Dons back into this game to, um, to you know, to change the, the expected outcome here. Um, obviously, the Gilman Greyhounds, number two in the state, number 23 in the country, according to Max Preps. Um, second only to DeMatha within the state of Maryland. They're a team that once you get behind on, there is really no coming back unless they give you some help, and hopefully the Hounds won't do that. Absolutely. Gilman being the 23rd best team in the country right now, really just an impressive performance here today at Loyola. Now I'll tell you, this Loyola team, their fans, their students, came into today fired up. You oh, see the certainly. student section was vibrant. Everybody was looking for this win here today, this upset special against Gilman. But uh, under that pressure, on the away game that Gilman faced today, they have not bent. They have proved their dominance, and a complete team is a team that can win on the road as well under tremendous pressure. And I think that the star power of Gilman's quarterback and, and the overall great performance by the team here today has been the thing that will carry this team through the entire MIAA season. Oh, certainly. You know, the Hounds are going to face Mount St. Joe next week. Um, and, you know, they're going to go through their MIAA season. Um, hopefully, uh, I, I think the expectation at Gilman is an undefeated season. Um, considering the, the non-conference type of record that they've had, they have tried, tried to show their dominance this year and that they're going to be the powerhouse. They're going to be the team to beat this year, all building up to the Gilman-McDonough game in November, I believe that's November 7th or 17th. Um, getting my I believe it's November 7th. Here. November yes. 7th. Um, 
the Hounds will take on McDonough in the 100th Annual Gilman Classic. Um, and the buildup has been amazing. It's going to be at McDonough um, on a Saturday during the day. We lost internet connection. Let's see if we get it back. Try the other Wi-Fi. <sighs> yeah, we got to do something. You could try the Xfinity again. Some guy has a MiFi thing. How did we get signed out of the Loyola Wi-Fi? I have no idea. It's really spotty. And hello, everybody. We're back. Sorry about the brief network disconnection there. As I've mentioned previously, the network here at Loyola has been utterly terrible, to put it lightly. I think uh, I think Matt can agree with me that we haven't really had the opportunity to broadcast without frequent network interruptions. But hopefully in the second half, we'll be able to do so, provide you guys with some good play-by-play -play and color commentary, and hopefully Gilman comes away with the win. And hopefully the Dons will be able to perform better than their Wi-Fi in the second half. Absolutely. We'll I'm sure everybody on the Loyola sideline is hoping so, because I'll tell you what, this Wi-Fi has not performed well. Now allow me to add that next week we'll be facing Mount St. Joe at Gilman. That game will be live on Greyhound TV. That game will be broadcast by myself and Matt Tomaselli as we look to get the second, hopefully the second win, barring a Gilman loss today, of the MIAA regular season for the Hounds at home. That will be a home opener for the Hounds, and you know that everybody looks forward to MIAA play. Certainly. And, you know, the Hounds, as I was saying earlier, the Hounds really expect to go undefeated. Um, they That's their goal, all building up to this Gilman-McDonough game, which is going to be one for the ages, which will also be broadcast on GTV on November 7th. Um, however, uh, commentating that game are going to be some Gilman alum, Mr. Tim Holly, a former Gilman football, baseball, and basketball player, as well as Mr. Sherm Bristow, uh, the Bristow family being legendary coaches within the Gilman community, along with Dan, Mr. Dan Christian, uh, who is a devoted coach and ninth grade English teacher as well. Yes, two outstanding members of the Gilman community ready to commentate that historic game, which will take place at McDonough. But if you can't make it to McDonough, don't worry, because that game will be broadcast live on either Greyhound TV or Greyhound Radio. We welcome back to the booth here as we get ready for the start of the second half. About two minutes left in halftime. And uh, certainly the Dons are looking to outperform their, their first half selves. But I'll tell you something. Kasim Hill, if this is a showcase for what's to come this season in the MIAA, he could be looking to be the best player in this conference. It has been outstanding on the offensive side of the ball by Gilman. And I'll tell you, the pocket presence that Kasim Hill brings with this team, he, he's a triple threat. He can extend the plays while also running and passing accurately. It is fantastic to watch such a gifted athlete play for our team. Truly incredible. And one of the things that uh, makes Kasim a unique high school quarterback is his arm. He can throw the ball, unlike many other high school athletes can, deep downfield, tight spiral, and is really going to improve the passing game for the Hounds this year. Sorry about that interruption, folks. Uh, sorry about that interruption. It was uh, unexpected. A a, uh, com a a pedestrian walked by and had a few words to share with us about Gilman Mass Media. Obviously, we're representing Gilman. Seemed like an appropriate time for that. Absolutely not. But I can definitely sense your sarcasm. So, Gilman, looking good here with a 28-3 lead as halftime is coming to a close. With five seconds left to go, three, two, one. We're ready to start the second half, ladies and gentlemen, on Greyhound Radio. It's myself, Julian Barron, alongside Matt Tomaselli, ready to get this show on the roll. And Coach Keith Cormanic, as well as um, Coach McGregor, have gotten the Hound special teams fired up to return the second half kick as they deferred on the coin toss to open the game here today at Loyola Blakefield. Looks like Corey Stevens and Dorian Maddox are both back deep. One of them will return this kick, depending on where this ball goes. 
And once again, it's the Loyola kicker, number 42, Gavin Rowley, on to kick this ball deep. As we start the second half of play, 12 minutes, ready to go. The game clock's reset, and the second half is underway. The kick is fielded by Corey Stevens, but it goes through his hands for a touchback. Now we remind our viewers, our listeners, should I say, that Gilman had the opportunity to receive the ball early in this game, but rather they chose to defer, and Gilman gets the ball at the start of the second half with a dominant 28-3 lead. Fantastic to see Kasim Hill and the rest of this Gilman offense come out in a comfortable situation as this game draws closer to an end than a beginning. Yep, and the Hounds offense is going to come out now. Um, you know, the Don's defense absolutely has to shut it down now if they want to have any hopes of craw crawling back into this game. No doubt about that. They cannot afford another score from the Hounds. So Kasim Hill, he takes a snap, and it's a handoff right up the middle. That was either Dory or Matt, Dorian Maddox or Antonio Dupree. I believe that was Ant Antonio Dupree. Game's about three. And that powerful offensive line, again, getting the push for the Hounds. It's been the story of the day for the Gilman running game. Just these Don's defensive linemen have not been able to get the push off of the Hounds. Now Kasim Hill fires out to the far side. Pass is caught. That's number three, Brandon Madison. And that'll be a Gilman first down. So Gilman moving the ball steadily as they were doing in the first half here at the beginning of the second half. Now, I think you can agree with me, Matt. If Loyola wants to get back in this game, I think that the defense needs to make a statement. There's no doubt about that. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, they did early on. They were they were able to hold the Hounds a little bit um, early, although that contributing to that was some Gilman mistakes. So we'll see if this Don's defense can shut down the Gilman offense, but it's been tough all day. Absolutely, as Antonio Dupree runs for a first down. Gilman moving the ball very well here to start the second half. But for Loyola to get back into this game, I think... Just in my personal opinion, a a turnover is a necessity at this point. You cannot, you can't win this game without stopping this Gilman offense. It's just, it's Absolutely an obvious not. obvious note as Kasim Hill under pressure oh, wow. gets rid of this ball as he's almost sacked. An impressive play by Kasim Hill. Didn't do anything. Didn't get any yards. But I'll tell you what, he was able to get rid of that ball when he was under pressure. Yes, he was. You know. The Don's play, you know, Kasim was just too big for the Don's pass rusher. Kasim Hill was just too big for the Don's pass rusher on that play, and uh, although the Don's, the Don's player wrapped him up, he did not take him down, and Kasim was able to get the ball off. That's right. Again, our apologies about the network connection issues. As Dorian Matt, uh, excuse me, Antonio Dupree runs forward, close to the first down marker, and it looks like he'll have it. Honestly, I have no idea. Hopefully, it means we're on. Hopefully, it's just lagging. That's that's the best yeah. case scenario. Kasim Hill moves Thomas Booker in motion before the snap, and he flips it out on a curl route, but Corey Stevens not able to do anything with that except for, uh, again, about five. John Fitzgerald over there ran a uh, little out route, expressing some frustration with the uh, the short passing game. But, you know, I think the Hounds are going to stick to short passes and to run plays. Uh, although to Fitz Fitzy's disappointment, I think that's the best way to go to run this clock out. Well, the Dons got the stop they needed. It's Alex Cohill on for the punt. Let's see if the Don's offense can make this a game here with, 28 to 3, with a 28-3 game with 10 minutes to go in the second, excuse me, in the third quarter as number one, Dory Maddox, on the block for his punter, Alex Cohill. Cohill takes it, and it's almost blocked by Loyola May on a piece of it, but uh, it looks like this ball will roll down to the 20-yard line where it will be down by the Gilman Special Teams unit. That was Drew Ehrlich there. And, you know, I'll tell you, the, the, the Dons have done a good job on special teams today, getting into the backfield. They've gotten a piece of two punts and almost gotten a piece of two kicks today, and it, it's been really impressive. That's right, Matt. This Dons team has not been completely shut down. I will add that. It is impressive that they have been able to move the ball on occasion, but it's just the sheer athleticism of these Gilman players that has put them over the edge in, in comparison to the Dons team here today. Certainly. 
So now Jason Smith on again as the Don's quarterback with his running back number 33, Biafra Akaronquo. Split out to his left as Jason Smith throws it and it's completed to number 10. I wish we could tell you who that was, but again, he's not on our roster. Now, that was a 15-yard game. The Gilman defense giving the Dons a few new looks. Number 15, Rob Levine, the junior special team specialist, is out on the field at, uh, at the strong safety. Well, I'll tell you what. This Gilman team on defense needs to make a stop to keep the momentum from swinging in the Dons' way as Jason Smith flips it out to his receiver on the far side. That's number 14. It's number 14, Andreas Price, who we saw a bit of in the first half. Let me get him about four or five. Maybe about six. Seven yard game, rather. So it'll be second and three for the Dons. Certainly do not want to see them move the ball as we start the second half. Cannot have a momentum swing, as I stated earlier. Gilman coach is watching eagerly on the sideline, praying for a defensive stop here as Jason Smith steps back. And now he takes off, but he's taken down hard. Isn't able to do much of anything with that play as he's, he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. Absolutely clobbered by Ellison Jordan. Been the story of the defense all day. Making plays, disrupting this Don's offense. No doubt about that. We've seen Ellison Jordan. He had a fantastic play earlier today. He's shown up all over the place on this Gilman defense. Certainly hope that we see him a little bit more as this game progresses, as there's some movement on the line, but there's no flag called. Play continues. And Jason Smith trying to read the play from the Loyola sideline. And Smith rolling, looking, has blockers. He's going to take off. Smith down just short of the 45. Does he have the first down? That's the question. He's very close if he doesn't have it. So it looks like it'll be about fourth and one. Very interesting to see Loyola's punt team out for this one. I'm not sure I understand this decision. They are in their own territory. I understand that. But this would be a situation where I would feel down 28 to 3, you need to go for it. Yeah, you know, I don't think it's essential for down territory. I think it's a good idea with uh, how slow the offensive is moving. But I guess they're going to punt it away and see if they can't get the ball back and stop the Hounds' offense. The only so, reason I say that is because they haven't been able to stop the Hounds' offense all day as the, as the snap is high, but it's able to be gotten off by the. Loyola punter, and this is Piper Bond on the return. Piper Bond, yes. Thank you, Matt. This is Piper Bond on the return. Piper Bond on the return. Pretty couldn't, good. couldn't see his number as I was trying to look around a, uh, a donation box here for Archer from uh, Archer Semp, I believe. His last name is Semp, indeed. Um, donations being taken here at the uh, yeah. Gilman. Gilman Loyola game. Obviously, Archer Semp, a big rallying point for the, the whole private school community, despite being at McDonough. He has a close family relation in Gilman, fathers and brothers graduating from Gilman. And, uh, you know, a lot of the players for the Hounds there are wearing Archer Strong bands and Archer Strong on their tape and jerseys. Absolutely. Our very own Mr. Smith is a relative of Archer's as Kasim Hill flips this out to Dylan number Bird 80. catches a pass in the flat and breaks a tackle to gain about seven yards, I'd say. A fantastic play by Kasim Hill. Good to see the first-year junior catching passes. So Till from the shotgun. And he hands the ball off to Tony Dupree, stumbling forward, taking the Loyola pile with him. And that's a first down. And that was a great block so, by number seven, Thomas Booker, on the play to, to boost some yardage there. So this is the concern that I had when Loyola punted it for their sake. You know, I don't think that they have necessarily proven that they can stop this going offense on a regular basis. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, will the confidence in their defense pay off on this Gilman drive? As John Fitzgerald is on the near side. Excuse me, that's not John Fitzgerald. As Antonio Dupree takes off. He stumbles around the 50-yard line. So another first down for the Greyhounds as they continue to move this ball with ease. Trevor Hennigan from Loyola on the tackle. Been relying on this PA announcer quite a bit today as our rosters are not exactly 
the best as Kasim Hill takes the snap and he's going to walk this out. one deep. He's got a man deep open, ball. Piper Bond, and Piper Bond takes this ball all the way to the one yard line it looks like. He's just short of the goal line, but it was a perfect throw from Kasim Hill and the connection with Piper Bond makes this game even more in the Greyhounds' favor as we near the halfway point in the third quarter. A dime to move the Hounds into Don's territory, and they're really threatening another score, and this would be absolutely a nail in the coffin, I think, for the Dons, although it being the third quarter, and there it is. The handoff to Dupree puts up six for the Greyhounds, and now this game could be ice. It's a 34 to six, excuse me, a 34 to three lead for the Greyhounds. Awaiting the PAT from Alex Cohill. That's correct. Extra point would make it 35 to three. 6.18 to go in the third quarter. Now again, that, that fourth and one where they punted on, on Loyola's part, absolutely looming large as Gilman just scored. Cohill, the snap, the kick is up, and it's right down the middle. So Gilman with a commanding 35-3 lead here, and I'll tell you what, I would be hard-pressed to say that Gilman doesn't have full control of this game at this point. I completely agree. You know, a commanding lead, six minutes left in the third quarter, plus one more quarter, but really with how the Dons have been playing and their inability to stop the Hounds' offense and get any momentum going on, on their own offense doesn't look good for the Dons today here at Loyola Blakefield on Hard Game Field. It's an impressive play by Piper Bond to take that oh, certainly. down to the one-yard line. You know, the sophomore played JV last year. And, you know, he's not the biggest guy on the team or the biggest guy in the MIA for that matter, but this kid is quick. No doubt about that. And I'll tell you what, another great example on that play, as I've emphasized before, of Kasim Hill's ability to put the ball on the money. For sure. One of the nicest throws we have seen all day and perhaps all season from Kasim Hill. The energy here at Loyola, it's certainly dying as the student section... Does not have much to cheer about, with their team only having put up three points and giving up 35 to the 23-ranked Gilman Greyhounds. Uh -huh. and they've grown quiet today. They were quite loud this week as they were tweeting back and forth with the Hounds with some trash talk. Absolutely. But now, no talk at all. You prove yourself on the field, and that's certainly what Gilman has done so far today as the kickoff is returned by Loyola to about the 25-yard line. I'm going to pause one second to let you know that you're listening to Greyhound Radio. I am Julian Barrett alongside Matt Tomaselli. we got 6-12 left in the third quarter and a great afternoon for some football here. It's about 6 o'clock. And I'll tell you what, watching this Gilman team today, just emphasizing the fact that this team, definitely special compared to years past. Oh, for sure. This is one of the best Gilman teams that people have seen in a while. Perhaps one of the best team in the program, arguably, ever. Uh, 118 years. Uh, this is the 118th Gilman football team. And this is one of the best yet. You're earning a national ranking unparalleled from years before at 23 in the country. Absolutely. And that's all thanks to some huge non-conference wins to start the season, including beating the uh, preseason ranked number 15 in the country, Paramus Catholic, New Jersey. That was a huge win for this Gilman football program. I cannot emphasize enough that these out-of-conference games, they, they really set the tone for the upcoming season for a team. And you can only imagine where the Hounds would have been had they pulled off that win at St. Edwards to open the year. Um, As Jason Smith, the Loyola quarterback, is sacked, you know, the Hounds, they lost the game by one, but they came out with setting a tone, had all the momentum, and were leading the game against St. Edwards, but were not able to pull it out in the end. And I, I can only speculate where they would be ranked should they have won that game and been coming into this game 4-0. That was Elson Jordan making his force known once again with the sack on that play of number eight, the quarterback of Loyola, Jason Smith. So now, Loyola, it's dire measures here as they've got four wideouts split out, two to the left, two to the right, as Jason Smith taken down for the second consecutive play. You know, and I know he's only a sophomore, but I'm surprised the Dons haven't tried Will Kors in their quarterback. He certainly showed that he could play in this league uh, against Landon um, in the second quarter. Um, and, they, you know, honestly, the Hounds didn't know who was going to start this game going into it, but um, obviously Jason Smith retained the job after Alex Col Colch Rider, excuse me, uh, is out for a month with a shoulder injury from the first game in their loss to John Carroll. 
now as Loyola punts the ball, fielded by Piper Bond, and it's a fair catch just short of the 50-yard line. That ball will be taken on the Gilman side of the field. So it'll be interesting to see, will Kasim come back out onto the field, or will we see Purnell Hill, number 10, the sophomore quarterback? It'll be interesting to see what decision Biff Poggi, the head coach of Gilman, makes regarding his quarterback position. Now, it looks at the moment like Kasim Hill's going to come yeah. back onto the field. He may want to give some younger guys some time, and you know, you don't want to count out Sawyer Lynch, the sophomore quarterback uh, for the Hounds. He's actually starting on the JV team, but I think he's suited up to this game, and uh, maybe he'll see some time. So now on the near side, it's the wide receiver, Dylan Bird, number 80. Getting some good Six, playing time today. Absolutely. 6'5". He's a fantastic threat downfield and over defenders as the, uh, the quick pass to number 12. Zach Jones, the junior, is getting in some time. So it looks to me at the moment that the uh, the position that... Oh, it looks like Thomas Booker's still in the game. Dylan Bird still the receiver. Out to the near side. The handoff is to Dorian... Um, excuse me, Antonio Dupree, who breaks wow. free. Down to the 40. Down Woo! to the 30. There's a flag out. He's still on his feet. Stays and bounds all the way down to the 20-yard line, but there's a Antonio flag out. We'll see who this one is Antonio on. Antonio Dupree absolutely leveled two Loyola defenders, but it was all set up by number seven, Thomas Booker. A beautiful block. I'll tell you, Antonio Dupree today, he has been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The duo of Kasim Hill and Antonio Dupree has this Loyola defense in shambles. There's no doubt about it. Could perhaps be unstoppable this year in the MIA, especially accompanied by Dorian Maddox. You know, some days Dorian will get the majority of the carries, other days Dupree. Today, Dupree has been absolutely dominant, and they've kept him in there, and rightfully so. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Skies are a little bit gloomy here, but may I remind you that we have 3.56 to go in the third quarter. This game is nearing a close, and Gilman has a 35-3 lead with the ball in Loyola territory. Now, the penalty on the previous play was a face mask on the Loyola defense, and that'll move the Gilman offense all the way down, close inside the red zone, it looks like. Yeah, it's certainly getting dark here at Loyola. Uh, I want to remind everyone that the Gilman uh, Volleyball Hounds are out at St. Paul's today. The game began at 5.30, and they'll be taking on uh, St. Paul's today. So go out and check that out if you um, after you list, after the, this game. Now, uh, what it looks like in the forecast, we're not supposed to get any rain, but you never know what could happen. As of right now, things are dry, and Gilman has the ball, and is in command of this game as Kasim Hill hands this ball off to Antonio Dupree, stumbles forward. It's tackled down inside the 10-yard line. Again, with three minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter here. Hounds are, are threatening to score once again. Allow me to remind everybody that you're listening to Greyhound Radio, Gilman's one and only sports broadcasting service alongside Greyhound TV. I like to think of it as one rather than two services. Same guys, same team, same point. As number 31 is in the game as running back, that's Aaron Cranston. Takes this one all the way down to the goal line. Looks like he's just short. Looks like that was Aaron Cranston, the senior. We also have number 81, who is the only person on the team with a gray helmet. I guess they ran out of the blue helmets that the Hounds are wearing today. So now Gilman in prime position to score. Hand off to Cranston, and he's crossed for the touchdown. He puts it in. Six more points for the Greyhounds as this lead is now extended to 41 to three with three minutes to go in the third quarter. An absolutely dominant performance by these Greyhounds today. Couldn't ask for much more as Gilman has shown their worth as the number 23 ranked high school team in the country here today. And I think that's just to get about going to seal the victory for the Hounds. But uh, Buck Davies is coming in on the line for the Hounds. A senior. Hasn't had much time today in the game, but he's going to come in, I think, for Stuart Keener at center. Now, it'll be interesting to see how many people that wouldn't normally get playing time will now get playing time with this blowout now officially in effect. Yeah. You know, Coach Poggi, uh, Mr. Biff Poggi, he's all for playing the, the guys who are, are not able to get some time. And the Hounds um, usually during their season are fortunate enough to have a few blowouts where they can uh, let some of the guys, uh, the guys who don't get as much playing time into the game. Absolutely. It's good to see. No doubt about that. 
always great to see some guys that don't normally get to play come in and show what they have to contribute to this football team. See, now, John I'm, Fitzgerald having a conversation with uh, the coaches on the sideline, Coach Rob Ford. And looks like Corey Way, number 77, another senior, is going to come on to take the kick here. The Hounds have three senior kickers, so it's going to be interesting to see who takes the job next year. Things could get very interesting as this game progresses because, we, as we've discussed just now, Biff Poggi, the coach of the Gilman Greyhounds, likes to put in guys that don't normally get a lot of playing time on this team. So Corey Way on to kick. And you hear the sound of the Loyola Don's gong. They have purchased a gong for their student section. Interesting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's laid, Loyola. Out, it's laid out by the Loyola Don's. Loyola was able to take the kickoff return all the way down past the 30, around the 35-yard line. Again, 42-3 to is the score as the final seconds of the third quarter are upon us. I'm Julian Barron alongside Matt Tomaselli again with you for Greyhound Radio. And that was a great return by the Don's. Uh, we'll see if they can turn it into some, to some offensive momentum. At this point, you just kind of have to sit back and say, hey, you know what? This game is over. What do we do? Do we just do something to, to make sure that our football, feel, our football team feels confident going into next week's matchup? Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's the mindset that I would have as a Don's coach. Yeah, 42-3 to three with 30 seconds and ticking uh, in the third quarter here. I, I think this game is pretty much out of reach. Will Kors is going to come in, a quarterback for the Don's here. I haven't seen him all day, but he's going to keep it on a read option. He's going to take it right at the middle. Gets laid out by a Gilman defender, but he gets up. Looks fine. That'll be gain of a few. It'll be second down and six. And, you know, for now for the Dons, this is uh, – they're really going to test Will Kors here and see what he can do against a powerhouse team like Gilman. Here in the late – probably as the game is already over, you would assume. Um, and we're going to see what Will Kors can do and see if he has – if the Dons have a bright future in him at quarterback. Well, we've we have officially reached the end of the third quarter here at Loyola Blakefield. Again, the score is 42-3 to in favor of the Greyhounds. And uh, Greyhound Radio has been happy to bring this broadcast to you here today from Loyola Blakefield. Now, let me just tell you that I, uh, I, I want to personally apologize – for the network issues that we've had today. We haven't exactly been able to broadcast clearly because of the poor network that we found here at Loyola. But I'll tell you something. This Loyola student section, not nearly as vibrant as they were in the beginning of this game. Understandably so. Their team has not living up to expectations. They really wanted to pull the blowout today, pull out the upset win. But Gilman has turned that right back on them and... They lead this and game 42-3. to three. Gilman, as Purnell Hill warms up on the sideline uh, for the Hounds at quarterback, the Gilman defense is going to come on uh, as Will Weinfeld comes in a defensive tackle. The junior hasn't seen the field today. The pass is complete. Also on the field, Buck Davies at the other defensive tackle. Will Kors lines up in the shotgun, takes a snap, and it's a draw play. Runs up the middle, gains about seven. Great play by Gilman's own Evan, Ger Evan Gregory. And that's a first down. It's the sophomore Evan Ge Gregory on the tackle for Gilman. And Alex Slodzinski, number 46, is in at safety, it looks like. Definitely going to have a lot of guys that wouldn't normally get a chance to play once again yeah. in the game as the pass is complete to the far sideline. This Loyola sideline, even in this assured Gilman win, still staying in the game and want to see their Don score touchdown to make sure yeah. that this game isn't a complete failure on and the again, offensive side of the, the ball. the sophomore quarterback, number 12, Will Kors, is really moving the ball against this Gilman defense. It, it makes you wonder why didn't they didn't try him earlier in this game when there may have still been a chance for them. No doubt about that. Jason Smith certainly did not look as good as Kors does right now. As Kors steps up and runs to about the 40-yard line, certainly showing his pocket presence here today. Oh, certainly. That being said, it's important to consider Gilman has taken out many of their starters on defense, but yet... Some of these guys on the Gilman defense uh, are really some powerful competitors and still large, big, and mean. Now, Purnell Hill, you can see him warming up at the sideline with some coaches. 
As we can assume that Kasim Hill's day is done as Coors fires to the far sideline. The pass is complete. And it looks like they could be close to a first down. There's another completion from Coors. Pretty, pretty impressive the young sophomore has been able to show. Well, you have to consider also the fact that Gilman likely does not have all their starters in in the defensive unit. The secondary is probably featuring some guys that wouldn't normally get the start. So, well, of course, probably has a little bit of an easier time than Jason Smith yeah. did as that passes Aaron and incomplete looking for a man up the middle. Didn't have him. So it's third down and ten. The Dons looking to make something of this opportunity to get on the, get, excuse me, extend their deficit. Unfortunately, they, uh, they are... They are behind 42 to 3. Not sure what I said makes any sense, but what does make sense is Coors throws on the run, complete to the far sideline, excuse me, the near sideline, to number 14, Andreas Price. A good job by Coors to evade the pressure, to roll out uh, outside of the pocket, and to make a throw on the run and complete it on the, across the sideline. Really an impressive performance from Coors so far. You wonder if he would have started this game, how. Would this game Maybe. have gone can, differently? We can certainly only speculate, Julian. And the handoff to their star senior running back. And he is near the goal line. Is he in? And he's in for Loyola touchdown. Like Akaronquo, number 33, Loyola's star running back, able to get his first score of the game and the first touchdown of the game for the Dodds, certainly yep. making something of their opportunity to score with their new quarterback, number 12, Coors. Yeah, so now Rowley's going to come on yet again for the extra point. He's had a busy day, mainly punting, uh, although he did hit a nice, probably about 30-some yard field goal earlier, way at the early, uh, at the beginning of the game, to put three points up on the board for that. Absolutely. Dons. And that explains their three points that they had just a few moments ago, but now it's a 10 it's a 42 to 10 lead for the Greyhounds as Loyola cuts into the deficit just slightly, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to do anything with that. So let me remind you that I am Julian Barrett alongside Matt Tomaselli on Gilman Radio. And uh, with this 42 to 10 score right now, you have to assume that the Greyhounds are in prime position to walk away with a 1-0 conference record as we approach the halfway point in the fourth quarter. Now Gilman getting ready to receive the kickoff. It'll likely be Gavin Rowley on the kick for the Loyola Dons. Quite the crowd here at Loyola. Everybody, you know, gets excited about these games, especially, you know, when you're facing a team that's as highly ranked as Gilman. Certainly, and the, the Loyola Dons came in with some, some probably undeserving confidence into this game, trash-talking all over social media. Um, obviously, the Hounds didn't, didn't respond, but used it as motivation. Um, Kasim uh, saying, you know, th actually thanking the Don's fans and players that were trash talking him for the motivation, and it seemed to really work out today. You have to assume if the Don's would have used that same sort of courtesy rather than attacking the Gilman team on Twitter, Certainly. how maybe the momentum would have shifted today here on the field. Mm -hmm. I think the scoreboard says it all for the Don's as uh, Rowley is going to come out to an attempt an onside kick for the Don's, but the Hounds are going to call timeout uh, to set things up and make sure that they don't let the ball slip back to the Dons. So as a message to the listeners that we still have on board right now with a 42-10 to 10 Gilman lead, we apologize for any of the network errors that we've been experiencing today. Loyal's Wi-Fi has been nothing short of a disaster as we've been trying to uh, operate our first Greyhound radio football broadcast of all time. And with a 42-10 to 10 Gilman lead, regardless of how the broadcast went, I think I could say that this has been a successful day. Certainly. I think the Hounds have really uh, put on quite a show. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously shutting down Loyola on their home field, a great way to open the season for the Hounds in MIAA conference play. No doubt. So now... The Gilman kickoff team, excuse me, the Gilman return team, on to receive from Loyola. It's the same Loyola kicker, number 42, Gavin Rowley. And number 12, Zach Jones. Looks like he's deep to return this one. Yeah, Zach Jones is deep, but they're going to onside it anyway. And the onside kick looks like it 
You know, it was almost recovered by Loyola, but I think yeah. it's going the way of Gilman. It looked like the Dons actually touched that early. I wasn't sure the kick quite made it 10 yards when the Dons touched it. But it was a legal touching. I, that's the Looks like signal that we're getting from the rolling. referees. There was no flag thrown, but the touching of the shoulders by the referees indicates that there was indeed a foul. So Gilman will get the ball. Close out this game. Yeah. You know, it's become much more gray, dark, and the cowbells that were so loud and ringing uh, at this Loyola F Blakefield field uh, at the beginning of the day have certainly quiet, quieted down. Well, Gilman's made quite a statement today, I have yeah. to say. And the, their offense is going to come back on um, at about the Don's 49-yard line for another drive. Kasim still, still manning the offense at quarterback at the helm. I'm surprised to see that. I thought Purnell may get a few snaps here today as... Uh, Aaron Cranston. Aaron Cranston takes the run up the middle. Someone is shouting sugar from the media tower. I assume yeah, that's like a Loyola play. Offensive coordinator Jeff Gulein screaming sugar. Calling oh, that was plays a, into the headset. My bad. That was, uh, that was Mr. Gulein from the Gilman side. Or it might have been the Dons. I'm not quite sure. Not sure who that was, but it very, mal it very well may have been the vibrant voice of our own Mr. Gulein. And it looks like Alex Bricado, um is on the field here. Actually, that is somebody else wearing the number 47 jersey. Max Preps rosters once again not up to date. Now here's Aaron Cranston. Up the middle. And a gain of a few. Maybe four or five. Aaron Cranston on the camera. It'll be third down for Gilman as they continue to wind the clock here in this one. Everybody exactly. likes an exciting game, but I'll tell you what, Matt. It's very good to see Gilman having such a dominant performance. Oh, certainly. And, you know, oftentimes the Gilman student section can get frustrated with uh, how dominant this Gilman team has been in years past, really just blowing out many of the teams that they face, which can often be boring for, uh, for the fans to watch, but it's great to see the Gilman team so successful. Can't argue with that. So now Kasim Hill alongside Aaron Cranston. Lined up in the backfield with three receivers split out in a fullback type position just short of the line of scrimmage. And this play's blown dead. Looks like a false start on Gilman. False start. Gilman. So the Greyhounds will be backed up five yards. Five yard but they continue to try and wind the clock here as the 42-10 to 10 score remains and Greyhounds dominant performance does not go unnoticed. It's third, down. third down and eight for Hill and the Gilman offense. They fake the end around. They hand it off to Aaron Cranston, who hurdles the defender who fell down. And Ooh. then he's taken down to the backfield. But I'll tell you something that yeah. continues to wind there, the clock. There's a flag down on the field. I think it's going to be a horse collar on Aaron Cranston. Oh, looks like a face max by the Dons. And that will give, give Gilman an automatic first down, a really not, yes, a really sloppy pen, penalty, I'd say, by the Loyola Dons defense. You know, when you're getting blown out like this, I mean, even if you're not getting blown out like this, those are not the mistakes you want to make when you're playing a really good football team. Most definitely. Uh, also in for the game for the Hounds is uh, James Lotz, number 64, offensive lineman. Um, Stuart Keener is still manning the line at center. Steven Spinella is still working at uh, the guard position, as well as Devery Hamilton on the other side. I believe Jamie and Franklin is at the other tackle position. Kasim Hill in the shotgun. I'm not sure. It looks like Brian Applefeld may be lined out at wide receiver. That may be him, number 19. On the I near believe. side. He's not listed as a eligible wide receiver, but he is in that position. As Aaron Cranston busts the outside, stands oh, on his wow. feet after an attempted tackle by a Loyola defender, but still doesn't go much of anywhere. It'll be second down. You know, Aaron Cranston has been moving quickly and evading tackles, but he has been running east to west where he wants to be looking north to south as a running back. Number 23, Alex Sodzinski checks into the game as well. Hill, still in the game as quarterback. Kasim Hill, that is. Dominant performance all day. Really proving that this Gilman team has what it takes to make this a special year. I feel like we're talking to ourselves. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you to our four viewers still here. Um, yes, absolutely. We appreciate any viewership. Feel free to text us if you'd like a shout out at this point. In a blowout like this, all you can really do is have fun when it gets down to the late stages. 42 to 10 is your score with five minutes left to go. Third down coming up for the Greyhounds. See what they can do. And now it looks like Brunel Hill is going to check in at quarterback as we expected to happen a little bit earlier. Julian, who is that in the arm brace checking in for the Hounds? In the Hounds backfield, looks like number 35. Number 35, Jake Brummett. Jake Brummett, wow. Jake Brummett's getting some playing time today. Fantastic to see him in the game blocking for the Greyhounds as the handoff and to... Slodzinski. Brummett's quite the athlete. A football player, wrestler, and lacrosse player. Three sport, I believe on varsity in all three. Unless wrestling, he's a JV athlete. Yes. But I'm sure he'll be varsity this year. Jake Brummett, a very nice and friendly member of the Gilman community. Oh, Everybody respects him. Both on of the course, field uh, his and... His younger brother, a rising star, Jedi, uh, Jed. Yes, Jedi Brummett. Oh, well, Jed, also known as Jedi Brummett, the uh, freshman who recently hurt himself playing wiffle ball, a tragic accident. Oh, so but we all look forward to seeing him play for the Gilma team as he grows older and hopefully does not have the same sort of Kayleen. mistakes. Kayleen. Kayleen. Burnell. Takes the throw, Gore. and he runs up the middle. Kayleen Gore. Brunel the hill on the keeper. Two-yard gain. First down. I'm good. Driving down the field on the Don's 25. Purnell takes the snap and he's going to run out to the near side. And Purnell oh, nice with room to run. Gets pushed out of bounds by Loyola defenders, but certainly made something of that play. Let's see if this flag brings this play back. Looks like it's on Gilman. The linemen and offensive players for Gilman coming back. To the spot of the ball. Holding. Gilman. The holding penalty on the ground. It's going to back them up. Yes, it will. They'll replay the down. Penalty. Repeat, first down. So it'll be first and 20. Just across midfield for the Greyhounds. Brummett still in as the blocking fullback. Purnell, number 10, Purnell Hill, with Cranston, excuse me, Slodzinski out to his left. It's really getting dark here um, at Loyola. I think it's partly because of the overcast, but the sun and uh, moon yep. haven't been able to shine those last few rays of light. Um, yeah. Luckily, we only have three minutes left tonight um, in this evening's game, and it's really all but over. Absolutely, Matt. As our, our friend Jerry Sandusky on the Ravens call would say, I think it's safe to say the hay is in the barn. The hay is in the barn indeed, Matt. There is very little. In fact, there is no chance that Loyola has any, any possibility of winning this game. As Gilman has firmed up its first MIAA win of the year. Certainly a great way to start out the MIAA regular season. Uh -huh. Continuing on a fantastic out-of-conference Yep. And start. The, you know, the Hounds are going to line up on offense, and the clock is going to continue to tick. The Don's defense just playing for pride at this point. So, Purnell Hill now running, out racing Loyola defenders down the wow. sideline. Purnell Hill is going to increase this Gilman lead to 48 to 6. Excuse me, 48 to 10. Wow. Purnell Hill. Showing his speed at the quarterback position was able to outrace Gilman, def excuse me, Loyola defenders. 48 to 10 is now the score. Yeah, and I don't think that was really an intended scoring play for the Hounds. I think they were intending to just do another quarterback run towards the sideline, stay in bounds, and let the clock tick. But Purnell Hill found a hole up the sideline and had no choice, really, but to take it. 
anything they can do to to run this clock out, they were trying to do, but they were able to get six out of that. Now, Certainly. for now, Hill showing his athleticism as the extra point is good. It's 49 to 10. And that's from Corey Way, number 77, uh -huh. senior kicker behind Alex Cohill. Fantastic. Corey Way on to kick that extra point. So now 49 to 10. Gilman padding their already tremendously large lead here at Loyola. Happy to bring this game to you. It's Julian Barron alongside Matt Tomaselli. And I'll tell you something. This Gilman team is not letting up. Maybe a blowout, but Brunel Hill certainly making his presence known here in this one, Absolutely. scoring a touchdown on the ground. The Antonio DeCerbo, after an amazing day of work, is going to come off the starting middle linebacker for this Hounds defense. So we got a minute left here as the Loyola offense will probably come on for a few more snaps, but the clock is continuing to tick. We'll see if Will Course gets another shot to show off his talent for Loyola. You know, I don't even know if they're going to get the kickoff here. Um, I, I'm not sure quite why after a touchdown, but the clock is running. Um, and it's ticking down here. We'll see if they even run a play. Well, about 30 seconds left in this game. With a 49-10 to 10 lead, you're not going to do anything you don't need to do. But it's Corey Way on as the kicker. Looks like they may have to kick this ball. But at this point, this is just for formality. 15 seconds left as the referees look like they're going to blow the whistle to signal for the kick. And yeah, the kick will be off. And it's a squib kick fielded by Loyola. As time expires. And the game is over as Loyola, their returners tackled around the 40. So Gilman coming away with a 49 to 10 victory over the Loyola Dons. The, num the number 870 in the country Loyola Dons against the number 23 Gilman Greyhounds. I think you could assume before this game that Gilman had tremendous chances of winning this one, but they certainly proved that they are a dominant force in Maryland and throughout the country in high school football this year as they take to the field to shake hands with the Loyola players yeah. signaling a good game. And an absolute spanking today from the Gilman Greyhounds. I don't think you can put it any better than that. Yeah, and you know, they silenced all the trash talk that had been going on from the Dons. Um, really shut it down. And had a great performance today as they move on to Mount St. Joe next week. Well, we've been happy to bring this one to you. It's been myself, and Julian Barron, alongside Matt Tomaselli. Really a fantastic. Oh, and of course, we, we cannot forget our managers. We've also had Alexi Vlahianis and Anish Sood here today. They've helped us out. They've uh, contributed tremendously to the success of Gilman Radio, excuse me, Greyhound Radio and Greyhound TV. So time has expired here at Loyola. 49-10 to 10 is your final score the way of the Greyhounds as they open the season 1-0 in the MIAA. For myself, Matt Tomaselli, Anish Sood, and Alexi Vlajanis, I'd like to thank you all for listening. And even if our network was a little bit shoddy today, we hope to bring you all the rest of the games this season for Gilman football and other sports. Again, thank you for listening. You've been listening to Greyhound Radio, and have a fantastic weekend.